So I'm Jay Phillips, the creator of Adhesion, and I have a couple questions for you guys. How many of you have heard of Adhesion before you saw the uh, name on the agenda? Wow. Very cool. Um, how many of you guys have seen me talk in the past? Wow, a lot more than I thought. Um, and how many of you guys have VoIP development experience using Asterisk or something? Wow. Crazy. Um, so for those guys new, I define Adhesion as a framework for improving voice for IP development. Um, and when I say framework, I get really worried because people automatically assume that has something to do with Rails. And Adhesion is not Rails, by the way. It really missed me when people say that my work is something to the effect of a Rails plugin. Um, just as it myths all of us when people say that Ruby is a web development language or a web programming language. And that's mainly because the one killer app in Rails is, or in Ruby is uh, Rails and web development. So um, because it would be difficult for you guys to follow me um, about a subject such as VoIP without a good frame of reference, I'm going to sort of compare the emergence of adhesion with the emergence of Rails. So Rails wasn't a radical departure from the norm. It was many radical departures from the norm. It wasn't a, a minor improvement like the improvement from PHP 4 to PHP 5. It was an improvement across the board. It wasn't a home run. It was a grand slam. So to compare... Um, or to start the, I guess you could say, analysis of, of Rails and the emergence of Rails, the domain of it is in the highest level to simply generate some text and then send it over a socket. And the pioneers of the web development world saw that a Git request mapped over pretty well to a file system. So the first um, web servers had a thin abstraction of a file system, but soon they wanted forms and they wanted, they wanted Git arguments. And then we got CGI, which abstracts the logic into something that could be implemented in any language, such as C or Perl. And that really did the trick and made the internet become ubiquitous. And then came other technologies like PHP and Java. And we still had the CGI sort of standard out paradigm and the kind of file-based paradigm, but it was sort of consolidated. And developers could learn one language as opposed to an API written with Perl and one um, standard library. And that did the trick for a while. But we still had a lot of animosity and a lot of tension with the web development framework. And then Rails emerged, and I feel really got it right. The hard stuff is actually not the you know, database interaction and the core library. It's the interactions between the underlying systems, because the interactions are extremely dynamic. And I think the, because the dynamism is so apparent that Ruby was an obvious choice. And te technologically, Rails did it right, but emotionally, Rails did it right, too. Um, I think Rails is one of the first times that emotionally there's been such an, an uprising for a community, because when the emotion is so strong, the community goes out of its way to help it. And in the telecom industry, the opposite effect has happened. Telecom development is an exorcism. People go out of their way to hate telecom. And that's basically because it's been around for about a century and there's been an oligopoly the entire time. And it suffers from all of the same problems with an oligopoly. It's, they make tons of profit, keeps the, the low guys out, and there's no innovation. 
Um, but VoIP's here now. And it's saying, screw you guys with your landline infrastructure. We're going to use the internet. Woo! So I think one of the biggest uh, benefits to the VoIP industry has been Asterisk, which is an open source telephony platform that came out about seven years ago, but received a lot of adoption and, and um, has changed the world. It's made people become really competitive. It's all based on open standards, and it's increased the adoption of open standards among the big oligopolistic um, telephony companies such as like Nortel and Avaya and so forth. But Astros telephony development really sucks. <laughs> I compare it to the fourth circle of Dante's hell. This is a photo taken, by the way, of an Astros development shop. <laughs> this is a photo candidly taken of a developer starting his day, much like me at one point. These are the disparate systems that plague your, your environment and your development um, possibilities. And this is actually a photo taken of the development experience. <laughs> so for those of you guys that haven't ever seen a, an asterisk install, this is a file listing of the configuration directory in, a, in uh, asterisk. So your first task is actually to guess kind of what those files do. You know, they each have their own domain. They each have their own quirks. The protocols or technologies themselves have their own quirks. And in all, there's 7,300 lines of configuration that comes with standard asterisk. Does anyone know what, what the most important one is there? Extensions. Extensions.com, which I'll actually show you guys. If I can, where did my window go? I'm doing spaces right now, and it's not showing up on that one. That's cool. I'm trying to guess which, which uh, display. Okay, there it is. All right, so what I'm going to show you is a real-world extensions.com that I found online that was put up as a way for newbies to learn how to use it. So you don't have to derive any meaning from it. Just let your aesthetic senses fire. It's about a minute long. Notice the go-tos or the no-ops. Notice how every line has is numbered in some way. And so on each subsequent line, you have to like increase that number, or else it doesn't go to that number. It only goes to the number after it. You don't have to write. Alrighty. So more suckage. The, the VoIP industry is chock full of jargon. Does anyone here know what any of those acronyms mean? Is it IVR? Oh. Does anyone know what any of the acronyms are besides IVR? Oh. I don't believe you. Yeah. So. So um, these are, this is a small list of my pet peeves with the telecom industry. The hacky culture is actually a huge one. A lot of the guys in the telecom industry actually have like electrical engineering or telephony en engineering degrees. And they learn C you know, in college for four semesters or something. And they go out into the real world, don't use it for 10 years, start using it. They have no like real strategy. They just kind of hack something out. A lot of them go into Perl, and they continue to hack things out. The extension grammar was a total hack. It should have never been done. It should have been done with high-level language. But when you 
look at a typical, in fact, quite every single asterisk install, it's just this hodgepodge of like Unix commands and um, asterisk and maybe a database if you're really, really lucky. But database integration is actually surprisingly rare because it's just amazingly hard to do. So software quality fluctuates, so there's absolutely no testing culture. The, there's a problem I call the jigsaw problem, and that's how there's just so many disparate pieces that that's actually why I call adhesion adhesion, is an adhesion that you can hear to try to draw some of these disparate pieces together. And the biggest problem is the geezers. These are the guys that haven't learned anything new since my mom was born and are still in the telephone industry. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He's, no. You know, so you're not these guys by definition. So anyway, besides all this like mudslinging I'm doing of, of telecom, VoIP is actually extremely, extremely fun. The barrier to entry with asterisk and with open standards and so forth lets hackers get into really fun, nitty-gritty things, such as um, your cell phone being the perfect universal remote. It's something you have with you everywhere. It's something that all of us have in our pocket. It was probably the most of all of us. And it's something that even our grandmothers know how to use. So some of the interesting applications of it. This is an idea I had a couple weeks ago. So imagine at a conference like this where on a projector there's a Guitar Hero type interface. And with these up, down, left, right keys, you're basically competing among people who dialed into a public phone number and are playing in real time in some kind of uh, falling direction game like this. And there's actually an open source game called Set Mania. It's a DDR clone, Dance Dance Revolution clone. And if a little bit of effort were put into actually making the GUI, the GUI is the hardest part, I think that would be a fun conference game to play. So. Controlling your media center, this was one of the reasons why I wrote the helper system in Adhesion 07X. Um, it was one of my first uses of Adhesion. I had a hacked Xbox with Xbox Media Center on it. And Xbox Media, C media Center has a basically a REST interface to sending keys. So I created an Adhesion helper that would let me dial in with my cell phone to something on quick dial and control my media center with up, down, left, right. And you know, the five in the middle was go forward and one was go back. And it was really convenient. It's something that anyone could do, anyone could call into. Home automation, there was a talk the other day about um, integrating electronics with Ruby. But imagine using your phone to say control your door locks or control your blinds or control your lights or talk to you or like anything. Just let your mind run wild here, because I think that's an extremely interesting possibility. I think something that many people don't do. But on the subject of um, phone controlled door locks, I started this project about about a year ago, actually, to basically integrate my door with adhesion by getting this open source microcontroller called, called the Arduino that you can buy on sparkphone.com for like 30 bucks. And I created a sort of a custom USB dongle that basically showed up to OSX as a USB to serial device. And then I hooked that up on a breadboard to a RF transmitter over 315 megahertz. And then on the other side of my apartment, I had an RF receiver that would be controlled by this Arduino, buffering in input from the airwaves. And when it received open sesame or closed the door, it would turn a servo, servo appropriately. And then my servo fried my Arduino, and then I moved from Dallas like a week later. So. Yeah. So, okay. This is actually an extremely popular project, or an extremely popular um, use of an asterisk in the asterisk world. It's actually in the asterisk book, which I don't have. Anyway, uh, Dave Troy is a personal friend of mine. And I, a couple of years ago, he got a Roomba and strapped a w, WRT54G on top of it, running Linux. And it basically, he 
pulled power off the Roomba. And in this picture, you can, it actually has a battery strapped on it and a webcam. But the battery was there basically to power the webcam, and all the additional weight was like just killing it because its motors were so crappy, so they took all that off. And now it just has WRT powered off the Roomba's power. And the, the WRT has a serial interface, which talks to the Roomba's serial interface. And Asterisk is running on the Linux install, and he has a Wi-Fi phone that connects directly to that access point over 802.11b. And he calls an extension, Asterisk picks it up, and he can control the phone, press 1 to start sucking, press 2 to stop sucking. And it's actually this sort of, uh, this woman voice actress name, Allison, saying, press 1 to start sucking. <laughs> By the way, I'm, I'm also friends with, with Dave, and I'm a hobo, so I was, I was crashing on his couch, and this was a couple weeks ago, and I had my iPhone sitting on the ground, and I had the USB cable still plugged into it, and his Roomba was cleaning his house. It ran over my iPhone, got the cord wrapped up inside its motors, was cleaning his house, slapping my iPhone against the ground. It went underneath the couch and died, and I'm frantically looking for my iPhone, and we finally find it underneath it, and it, the back was scratched up. And because I uh, put the third-party app installer on it and screwed up my iPhone, like a couple days later, I took it into the Apple store and they replaced it. <laughs> <laughs> so miscellaneous mischief. <laughs> Spoofing caller ID is ridiculously easy. And in fact, in most applications, it's kind of required because you have, say, a 1,000 people, and whenever they call out, you want their caller ID to be the number where people can call in directly to them. So everyone lets you set caller ID whenever you call out, and then here's sports in and it's API. So that's fun. Um, confusing automated telemarketers. Asterisk has a command that you can send it that basically sends a bit of silence over the line to confuse any machine calling in um, to think that it's a uh, hang-up but it's inaudible to a human. So you can eliminate most of your automated telemarketers with basically one line of code. You can set up some system that dials you. When you answer, you have a dial tone and then can dial out. So if you have, say, a cell phone with prepaid but unlimited incoming calls, you can basically have free calls at VoIP rates um, whenever you want. And if you have an SMS that triggers that call, it's like, what, 10 cents to start the SMS? Just send it. Um, if you have a, an asterisk box or an adhesion box, you could optimize your productivity by, say, not allowing calls after a certain time or during your work times. You could have a blacklist that's managed by a database that has some rail scaffold on top of it that lets you go in and add people to the blacklist and so forth. You could have it integrate with your AIM or XMPP status to not allow calls when you're set to away, something like that. And businesses should really take a look at VoIP, especially if they haven't, um, in particular, not only for like saving money with, with phone calls, but also the added value of these interesting features you can, you can do and entirely integrate with your own um, internal te technological processes. So a summary of adhesion's benefits. The biggest thing, I think, is that it's abstracted, and it's abstracted well with Ruby. And because it's abstracted, it's portable. And by portable, I mean it's portable between people, because it's one of the first standards on which people can develop applications. It's portable between uh, machines, because, because it, it's all in a a single directory, you can zip it up and send it around and make runs of it. It's portable between operating systems because it's based on Ruby, and Ruby is cross-platform, and it's portable between PBX implementations. And by that, I really mean telephony platform implementations. There's Asterisk, but a, another alternative to Asterisk that has its upsides and downsides is FreeSwitch. And the new version of Adhesion 080 has FreeSwitch support as well, so your one dial plan is actually sort of works on either telephony platform, with a few exceptions that need to be sort of like uh, rolled out or eliminated. But it's definitely coming. 
So that's that's an interesting new development in the, the VoIP space, because that's never been done before. Adhesion simple. And by simple, I mean you could take that long dial plan I just showed you and port it to the adhesion syntax. But and, it, and once you did that, it would still be simpler, but you can use any of the high-level Ruby constructs and eliminate all of that bulk and integrate with the database and all the other features of adhesion, so it's, it's more powerful. It's extensible because there's a component system inside of it that lets you basically implement some small VoIP functionality and then trade it around to other people. And that's actually another new development in the VoIP space because there's no sharing of open source apps because it's just amazingly difficult. The DAO plan you saw is tightly integrated with all the other config files and there's no separation. So it's actually somewhat meaningless. Like you actually didn't see all of it, by the way. <laughs> there's all those config files that like zip.conf and eeks.conf and all that other stuff that define the trunks and stuff like that. So Adhesion abstracts it in a way that makes things still portable. Its internals are open. By this I mean Adhesion is open source software, but it's easily understood open source software. And a big problem with Asterisk is that it's tons and hundreds of thousands of lines, if not millions of lines of C code that few people can feasibly grok or you know, grok in any short amount of time. So with adhesion, things are relatively small and can be modified if a business needs to change something that they don't like about the framework. And by the way, uh, ad adhesion is monkey patchable through components or something, so you can easily just change how some of my stuff works. <laughs> and I think it's good for the entire ecosystem. Managers like it because they save money Developers like it because it makes them happy, and end users like it because of the new features it brings to market. So I'd like to make this analogy, and I apologize for the guys that have seen me talk before. But before adhesion, you have very few paints, very few tools. You have maybe your fingers and a paintbrush, and you get dirty. You have perhaps not much skill or not much room to improve. And after adhesion, I think it feels like Bob Ross. <laughs> You're extremely happy. You have all the paint you can carry. You have a huge brush and all these other tools lying down there. You totally bust out this beautiful little portrait in a 30 minute television show. <laughs> you get all the chicks, by the way. And that's true. I wish. And and you're happy. And that's that's the biggest, most important thing about good old Bob Ross. You know that when Bob Ross was still alive and he was laying in bed at night, staring up at the ceiling, he was thinking about painting. And I know that every one of us as Rubyists have done that at one point, staring up at our ceiling, thinking about class design or something like that. So in adhesion and in Ruby. Our tools aren't paint. They're text editors and, and syntax. But I think that there's one word that also very well captures the process of developing VoIP applications with Ruby, and that's pwn. <laughs> Are there any geezers in here who have not heard of the word pwn? <laughs> there are a couple. So, yeah, geezers. So, owned beyond conventional words and so excited about it, it's mistyped. I think that, that summarizes it well. But I also think Pwn accentuates the unconventional origins of adhesion. It originated with the hackers and the kids and the, the uh, subversive subculture. And I, I wear that that term or that, that tag proudly among these, these business guys. I love the informalness of it. So this, this is where we normally see ponage in 
the telecom industry. The telephony platforms are poning us as opposed to us poning <laughs> the system. So I have a nice, exciting announcement, and that's the new version of Adhesion, version 080, will be trunk as of today. It's, it's been stuck off in a branch and heavily developed upon, and now it's finally ready for prime time, and I'll be doing that when I get off the stage and get my luggage out of my room. <laughs> oh, so that's the announcement. The new stuff in the new version is the component system. Before it was called helpers, and that tended to get really unruly, especially with the new uh, tendency to organize your code a lot better in, in Adhesion 080. So there's a component system that lets you define these extensions in a much more uh, dynamic way, a much more dry way. There's a new call routing DSL, which is actually still in development, but will ultimately replace, for those asterisk programmers, sip.conf and eats.conf, and allow you to define how routes work based on a series of like regular expressions or asterisk patterns or, any, or basically a series of rules that let you basically pass one argument to dial, and that's the number. And based on your rules defined, it finds the appropriate trunk to use. And I'll actually, let me spend some time talking about trunk, because I think there's a lot of people that don't understand like fundamental concepts. So one of the biggest questions I get is, how can a computer call a cell phone with no hardware, no additional hardware? When you hear of a, a VoIP rate, it's actually a company charging that rate. And they do that through a service that you can buy that's based on open standard protocols, specifically SIP mostly. And you configure asterisk, or in this case, adhesion, to register with that service. And any calls you place go over IP, ultimately, to that one server and then out to the rest of the PSTN. Oh, sorry, PSTN is publicly switched cell phone network. Stop me if I'm getting too accurate. I mean, free switch integration I mentioned, it's the alternative telephony platform that scales better, but has a lot of quirks. Its protocol for letting third party applications control it is a little bit more powerful for people like me, but it's also a lot harder to difficult, or it's a lot harder to implement, but right now it's it's working, and and a compatible or a perfectly compatible version will be coming hopefully for adhesion 1.0, so that the entire DAW plan DSL translates well between telephony platforms. The new version of adhesion has better Rails app integration. A problem before was the adhesion app structure having a config folder and a database.yml file that conflicted with the adhesion or conflicted with the Rails database.yml file, among other things. And the new adhesion directory structure is actually dynamic based on this, this little YAML file that's, that's hidden and sort of defines the location of the folders. It's much more stable. The new code base is completely rewritten from scratch because before it wasn't very testable because it was, it was intended to be a, a much smaller framework. And the new version's a lot more organized and, and pretty well tested. And the new version of the asterisk book, which I'm pretty sure I don't have with me, has a chapter in it about adhesion. It's about 16 pages. Uh, that came out a couple months ago. So I think that's pretty cool. I think Rubius may have the biggest attraction to something like adhesion, but I think this is a huge milestone for the project to tap the grassroots asterisk guys that are just unsatisfied with 
the state of that, that project. And there's a book that I'm co-authoring that will be published by the Prags called Ruby and Telephony. So that, Dave Troy, whom I mentioned earlier, that did the Roomba is actually the other co-author for it. So what's next in adhesion? Richer abstractions. I'd like to do basically a, an abstraction of creating a menu. Right now, the case statement is an awesome way to do it because you can pass regular expressions or ranges and string literals or numerical literals. And you can put underscores in the numerical literals to separate like area code and the seven digits. And it's, it works really nicely, but it can be better. So that's something I'll be continually working on. Capistrano integration to automatically sort of set up your asterisk box for you. Imagine like <coughs> cap asterisk setup and it actually goes and modifies the config files over SSH so that you don't have to. And if that were the case, it would completely detach someone from ever having to learn any of the config files. I think it'd be very valuable, very significant. Phone provisioning. This is a problem in any business VoIP deployment because if you're setting up an office with, say, a thousand seats and a thousand phones, you have to have some way to centrally manage those con the configuration files for those phones. And the way it's done now is actually using a TFTP server that serves config files that are dependent on the actual vendor of the phone, or sometimes even the model of the phone. But to point the phone at that TFTP server, you have to edit the DHCP lease that would go out to it and point it to it. So you have to host your own DHCP server and modify the, the leasing policy. And it's a total pain in the butt. So something that abstracts that is perfect for adhesion. And you can integrate it with the active record models within adhesion and generate the config files from the database have it tied into the concept of a user, and then a user has or has a phone and then can uh, infer a lot of a lot of configuration related details from that. Asterisk 1.6 has a new bridging API and a new event system, kind of like tree switches, that offers some interesting possibilities for third party developers. And we'll see where that goes. We, Dave has been talking with the Asterisk guys about it, and it's actually not certain that it'll be released in 1.6, but we're really pushing for it. So that'll be exciting if they do put that in. Seamless free switch integration I mentioned. VoIP functional tests. Imagine a way of actually generating a call within Ruby over some integrated SIP stack and ensuring that some outcome was reached. And with a suite of tests like that, you could have sane telephony development. Because right now, none of it's ever tested, and there's no good way of doing it. And I think because adhesion is more of a stack than traditional means, it's much more feasible to do that. And by pure Ruby VoIP features, you could say, take a queuing and agent system or, or conferencing and using a bridging API, do that all in pure Ruby as opposed to letting the telephony platform do that in C. Because in C, it's, it's hard to modify it. So help computer. I don't know how many of you guys have seen that video, but. So the best way to learn a technology is to start a project. So I encourage you guys to give Adhesion a try. Give VoIP a try. I think it'll be really fun. And I think the Rubyists are naturally pragmatic and could enjoy something like this. Naturally hackers, too. So a couple suggestions. Help with phone phone revolution. That's, or actually phone hero, which would also be a good name for it. Um, if someone wants to get into making games with Ruby, maybe do that phone hero and expose some way for me to send it commands over TCP. That way, Adhesion could integrate with it. And we could have that conference uh, 
application. Try running your phone system for yourself. Um, implement a fun game that you can think of. And share your ideas. There's a mailing list. You can, you can talk on there, send me an email, and thank you. So it's 12.06, do I have time for a demo? So I'll actually be demoing the new version of Adhesion for the first time in public. Motion mirror displays. configured here to work with my soft phone here. And you saw that it just registered. So because the dial plan doesn't check for any extension that I dial, I can dial any number. Seven. Seven. So this is the Simon game. Simon basically says a number to you. If you input it correctly, it adds a new number to the list and says it to you and you have to Keep it in mind, so I'll hit seven. Good, seven, six. Seven, six. Good, seven, six, four. So I'll screw up and do zero, zero, zero. Two, time. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> I begin to exercise seven, six, four, nine. So that's the Simon game. That was actually a sound file that was included with Asterix. There's a lot of really fun things in there. So. Oh, the source code. It's in. Component, sign in game. Here. <coughs> By the way, um, some of the guys working on the new project and I <coughs> developed this as the sort of pilot for the, the component system. And this sort of outlines it. Um, the guys working on it are I'm proud to say Chad Fowler, Rich Kilmer, and Marcel Molina. And this is the, the syntax. So basically, there's a start for the component. How many of you guys use Adhesion helpers? So you have heard of Adhesion and never used it. OK. So there's a start method, and there can optionally be a, a stop method. but um, that's the code for it, by the way. And the code for all of this will be in the trunk spn.adhesion.com slash trunk. Later today, right now, it's the old version. But if you want to get to the old version right now, or the new version right now, it's spn.adhesion.com slash branches slash 080, 0 0.8.0. So I'll do... Hello world application. Hello world. <laughs> These are some files that do come with it. All your base are belong to us. <laughs> I 
That's really good for the telemarketers, by the way. It's really fun when combined with loop do. Weasels have eaten our phone system. Weasels have eaten our phone system. Cheap tricks. For Ed Harrison? For oh, for an actual like an app like this? Oh, that's actually empty. <laughs> oh, well, actually, I take that back. Oh, it's in progress. Who wrote that, by the way? Um, other fun things that they would play. You could play a, a number, so input two digits and then play it. So I'll dial in three. Thirty-three. Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. I I don't, but I could do it if anyone really cared, but I'm not going to do that here because that would take way too much time because it's so much crap to write. And it's actually not just extensions.com, there's relationships between, between config files. So... You are currently the only person in this conference. So to join a conference, you just specify some number. That could actually be blah, extension. So depending on what the person types, extension is a variable that that adheres and creates for you. Um, I could do join 444. You are currently the only person in this conference. And anyone else that dialed 444 on this phone system would be talking to me, but if they dialed 888, they would be talking to anyone else in that conference. So if you wanted to set up your own phone system with that version and have a conference set up, you could have like case extension, uh, when say 1,000 to 2,000 phone extension. So only allow conferences between those ranges, for example. So. Does anyone have any questions or better yet suggestions? Well, I was curious, what's the simple example of what a, uh, what the equivalent of the might look like? That's actually what he, what he mentioned. What was the question? Sorry, he asked if I could basically write a config file that's equivalent. How about, because that's a total pain in the butt, how about I shell in and take a config file and import it to Adhirshan. Two minutes. Talk to me afterwards. There's two minutes left. So, the context that exists. So, okay, you want me to, sh okay, okay. So, So, and by the way, this is the only line of code that it takes to hook adhesion up to asterisk. It's basically catches all patterns and then goes out to a certain IP over this protocol. So, is this what you... You want me to, I, I still want to, do you want me to port a complex? Oh, can you not see it? Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah, so, so the play sound files, the simplest example is to do playback or background. 
I don't think you could actually assume what background did because it means play it in the background and then receive input still. But I'll show you somewhere else in the doll plan where it actually does conditions and time matching and stuff like that. It was in that scrolling thing that you didn't get to see. So, yeah, so basically you set up a lot of go-tos, but if you had a, if you wanted to do a condition, you would do like go to if, but there's no Boolean primitive, so you have to do this within it to sort of cast something to a Boolean, and then you have like say one two three equals. I don't think it's equals equals. One two three, and then it's a ternary operator, and so you would do like three or four to to determine the priority to go to. Um, any more questions? Back here. One, this is the last question. Sorry. Uh, has there been any work integrating Infusion with uh, Sphinx or other voice recognition technologies? Absolutely. There's, there's been consideration of it. Each one of them has a different syntax for doing. Uh, sorry, the question was Is there any, has there been any consideration to integrate Adhesion with voice recognition technology? I actually wouldn't use Sphinx, I would use Lumenvox, which is a, it's sort of the standard voice recognition software for Asterisk. And it has its own sort of grammar, I guess you'd say, that's completely separate from the config files, but still totally sucks. And there, there's an XML format you can generate, which you can parse. So the way I would implement that for Adhesion is have a DSL spit out XML, which it then parses. And there's definitely been consideration for that, but it's, one of the many, many projects I have on my, on my to do list. So, thanks, guys.